Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010 Statistics for the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at the second practice test for Chapter 4 on Variability. The first question on this one is, if the formula for the population standard deviation were used with sample data, then the result would be A too big, B too small, C identical, or D impossible to calculate. Well, the answer to this one is it would be too small. Um, it's a little easier to see if you look at this formula here. Um, the, on the left is the uh, formula for the population standard deviation. You see it's divided by n. On the right is the sample formula, which is divided by n minus 1, the degrees of freedom. Um, the reason for this is the uh, sample needs to adjust for the fact that you had to calculate the sample mean in the process and that a sample is by, is by its nature a finite thing. Uh, populations, despite the fact that we have an n here, are sort of theoretically infinite because they're usually mathematical abstractions. But anyhow, the point here is if you use the population formula with a sample, it would be too small. And by changing the denominator, uh, by subtracting 1, so making the denominator a little smaller, in, increases the overall value, that compensates exactly. Um, it's not an approximate, it's an exact compensation to get the uh, sample standard deviation where it needs to be. Alright, one good use of the range is to A, identify missing values, B, separate groups of cases, C, check for outliers, or help in calculations of the standard deviation. Well, the answer here is to check for outliers. Um, you know, if, they're, if the values are missing, the range isn't going to tell you that. You can't tell that groups are different, and uh, the range doesn't go into the standard deviation, but you can use it to check for outliers. So, for instance, uh, we looked at this one in the last test. Um, if you see the, the top group, these are box plots that show distributions. The normal weight group, the cholesterol distribution, you see we got a person way out on the right. The, in fact, that person has the highest cholesterol of anybody in this uh, study. And that person is going to drive the range. <clears throat> So it's going to be a big range for this uh, set, which is a clue that something's going wrong, especially when you, compare to, when you compare it to the range for the underweight people. So one good use of the range is to check for outliers. Okay, number three. Compared to a mesocritic distribution, the tails of a leptocritic distribution are longer, shorter, have fewer outliers, or cannot be trimmed. Well, the answer is they are longer. Um, and here's how it works. Um, this is easiest if you remember the little cartoon picture that we had. Um, what we, we don't have a mesocritic here. Mesocritic is the normal distribution, the bell curve, uh, which is moderate curve with moderate tails. Uh, on the left here is the platocritic, that's a platypus, uh, that's got a large hump in the middle and very short tails on either end. It's the kangaroos on the right that together form the leptocritic because uh, it says here kangaroos known for a lepping, which means leaping. Um, there's a lot of outliers in a leptocritic distribution because the, the, the middle is narrow because not all the scores are there. It's because the scores are spilling out into the long tails. So you have to check for, um, in fact, that's really the defining characteristic of a leptocritic distribution is the presence of outliers. All right, number four, what is the population variance for this data set? You've got four numbers, four, one, six, and one. And your choices are 2.12, 4.5, 5, or cannot be calculated when the sample size is less than 10. Well, the answer to this one is 4.5. Um, that, that one there on the bottom cannot be calculated with sample less than 10. No, that's just not true. I just, um, but let me show you how it's actually calculated. Now, as I've shown you before, the first thing I'd like to do is create a, um, a table. And so I've made a table here with uh, the variable x on the side, and I've arranged the values from highest to lowest, 6, 4, 1, 1. The first thing I'm going to have to do is get the mean. So I add those all up, and the sum of x is 12, and then I divide it by the number of scores to get the mean of 3. By the way, I'm using a capital N here because uh, in Google Docs pre um, presentations I can't insert a mu. Um, in the second column, I get the deviations from the mean. I, I, sub, I take every score and subtract 3, the mean. So 6 minus 3 is 3, 4 minus 1 is 1, and so on. 
And then I square those deviations. I get 9, 1, 4, 4. That's in the third column. And then I add those up. That is the sum of squared deviations from the mean, or the sum of squares of the SS. So the sum of squares is 18. So sigma squared, normally I would have the little sigma, it looks like an O with a curly Q on the top. Um, sigma squared is equal to the sum of squared deviations from the mean divided by the uh, population size. So in this case, it's just 18. That's the total I got in the bottom of the third column. And I divide it by the, uh, the population size of 4. That gives me 4.5. And that is the population variance for this data set. All right, number five. If scores in the data set are very different from each other, then the standard deviation, A, cannot be calculated, B, will be biased for the sample, C, will be low, or D, will be high. Well, the answer to this one is that it will be high. Um, when they're very different, there's a lot of spread between them, then the standard deviation, which is essentially an average of how far everything is from the mean, it'll be a big average. If they were uh, very close, then the standard deviation would be very low. Uh, the idea that they would be biased if they're very different, no, that's nothing. And of course, you can calculate when they're different from each other. Anyhow, that is the second practice test for Chapter 4. We'll see you for the third one.